The correct answer to question 1 is histamine as histamine alone is sufficient to produce most of the symptoms of anaphylaxis. It works through the activation of both H1 and H2 receptors. H1 alone causes tachycardia, pruritis, rhinorrhea and bronchospasm. H1 and H2 receptor activation jointly contributes to flushing, hypotension and headache. Histamine also causes coronary artery vasoconstriction increased vascular permeability. Triptase although abundant and relatively specific for mast cells appears to be predominantly released in response to inoculation anaphylaxis. In sac stings intravenous contrast. In our case the allergen was a food substance and triptase only rises slightly with this and is therefore unlikely to be useful in diagnosis anaphylaxis. Nonetheless, the recent NICE guidelines remind us to take blood to check serum enzymatically active and released upon degranulation in the secretory granules found in mast cells. It is able to active complement coagulation and calicrin kinase system when present which contribute to hypotension, angioedema and clotting disturbances. The role of platelet activation factor PAF and the enzyme which activate it have not been well defined in human anaphylaxis. With question 2. Intramuscular adrenaline is the correct answer. Adrenaline is the key medication in anaphylaxis and should be administered as soon as anaphylaxis event is suspected. A dose can be repeated after 10 minutes if there are ongoing signs. As in our case, it has effect on the alpha 1, alpha, beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Activation of the alpha adrenergic receptor reverse uh, peripheral vasodilatation. Remember, alpha-1 adrenergic receptor reverses the peripheral vasodilatation and reduces the angioedema, reduces edema. This is turn prevents and relieves upper airway obstruction. Beta-1 receptor activation increases the force and rate of cardiac contraction. Histamine and leukotriene release is suppressed and bronchial airway dilated through the action of beta-2 receptor activation. Glucocorticoids are also useful in the management of anaphylaxis. However, due to the duration to the onset of action, several hours, it is unlikely to make a difference to the correct episode of any scenario. Although it is hoped it reduces the risk of uh, biphasic reactions, they work by switching of transcription of activated genes that encodes pro-inflammatory proteins. The coherence library is unable to support or refute the advice to use them due to lack of sufficient evidence. They do potentially relieve protracted or biphasic reactions. Antihistamine, predominantly H1 antagonist, are commonly used and are known to reduce itching, flushing, articaria and nasal and eye symptoms. They are not believed to have an effect on airway edema or spasm, hypotension or shock and therefore although can be considered are not going to terminate anaphylaxis in this scenario. The coherence library again published a review that does not support their use in emergency situation. The rule if any H2 antagonists like renitidine in acute allergic reactions is unknown but these are sometimes useful in management of chronic spontaneous articaria. Beta 2 adrenergic uh, agonist, beta 2 adrenergic agonist, example salbutamol are sometimes given for wheezing and shortness of breath. Although they help with lower respiratory tract symptoms, they have minimal alpha 1 adrenergic agonist vasoconstrictor effects and do not prevent or relieve laryngeal edema, upper airway obstruction, hypotension, no shock making this answer also less co correct. So, the answer first one is that anaphylaxis and histamine is uh, sufficient to produce most of the symptoms of anaphylaxis, the first line, this is important from this case. And with question to this para, first, second, third, number four para, I, I am repeating this is very important, with question to uh, intramuscular adrenaline is the correct answer. Adrenaline is the key medication in anaphylaxis and should be administers as soon as anaphylaxis event is suspected. A dose can be repeated after 10 minutes. Remember, intramuscular adrenaline can be repeated after 10 minutes if there are ongoing signs as in your in our case. It has effects on the alpha, beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Activation of the alpha adrenergic receptors reverse the peripheral vasodilatation and reduce edema. So, I am adrenaline mechanism of action in anaphylaxis is that it activates the alpha adrenergic receptors, reverse the peripheral vasodilatation and reduce in ed edema. This is uh, turn prevents and relief upper airway obstruction, beta 1 receptor activation, increase the force and rate of cardiac contraction, histamine and leukotriene release is suppressed and bronchial airway dilated through the action of beta 2 receptor activation. Please do subscribe and share my channel everyone. Thank you.